<laughs> okay, so, um, hi guys, um, I've decided to start a YouTube channel. Um, I'm not entirely sure all the content I will be posting, but for today's video, I am just going to give a brief who I am, what I like to do, um, stuff like that. <laughs> um, my name's Sarah. I'm 21 years old. I'm a mom to twins, identical twin girls. Um, I'll get into their story here a little bit in this video, maybe. I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm also a stepmom to four other kids. The oldest is three, and the youngest is twin boys. Uh, they're a year old. Um, I don't know if I'll be showing them a lot on here due to respect for their mom and all that. Um, I don't like to step on toes, so that's what I'm not gonna do. Um, but, little brief update. Um, I'm seven months postpartum. Uh, I had the girls November 2nd of 2020. Um, they were born prematurely at 29 and four days. The, my pregnancy was not the smoothest, um, if I say so. Um, there's a lot of complications. I had a really rough birthing experience with them, um, but they're here, they're happy, and they're healthy. Um, we got multiple doctor's appointments weekly. Um, they, got, they see different specialists for different needs. Uh, yeah. I live with my fiance. Uh, we just recently were able to get our own place. We've been here about three or four months now. <sighs> it's something that we definitely needed because when I met him, um, we were living with my mom. And not long after he moved in with me, that's when we found out I was pregnant. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is kind of awkward because I don't really, I didn't think that I'd start a YouTube channel, but I'm, I'm a stay at home mom. I should probably clarify that. So most of my vlogs would probably be my daily routines, uh, going to the doctor's appointments with them, uh, updating about them, myself, um, Uh, I'm sure as I get used to this, this will be a lot easier to do, but for right now it's kind of awkward, but, uh, <laughs> if you hear a dog, she's currently on my balcony, and if you hear cartoons in the background, my daughters are watching Elmo on my iPad and eating their bottle. That's what they love to do. Um, are you done yet, Star? Eventually, I will show my daughters, but for right now, the first few videos aren't probably going to be about that. I'm going to talk mainly about how it was being pregnant with them, how I felt, how my labor and delivery went, uh, my postpartum, because postpartum did kick my ass. Um, not gonna lie about that. I still struggle with it today, but it's not as bad because I reached out and I was put on medication for it. But there for a while it was pretty bad. It was hard to do daily things. Um, the girls did not get to come home with me due to their prematurity after delivering them. They spent roughly three to four months in the NICU with multiple like, ups and downs. Star! But before I was a stay-at-home mom, I was a CNA. I got my certification in 2020. Um, I'm a high school graduate. I did go to college briefly, uh, but with my workload and I did have a roommate at that point because I wasn't living with my mom. Uh, 
it was fun for a little bit, but things did not go well. It went south, and unfortunately, I stopped going to college. I was going to pick, eventually pick my major, but I was unsure of what I really wanted to do. Because growing up, I did want to be a doctor. And then as I got older, I realized, no, I don't particularly know what I want to do. I do enjoy taking care of my old folks. I love, I love taking care of my old folks. It was a very rewarding job and I do miss it, but right now my girls need me and that's what I'm going to do for as long as I need to because they, they deserve that. Their, their entrance to the world was not the greatest and I want to make sure that nothing happens. Who knows what you're going to hear in videos of mine because I got a dog and eventually my stepkids will be coming back. They just left to go back to their moms today after having them for a few days. And so she got a little fussy. Um, they are currently sick. I'm sick too. It hit them a little harder than it did me. They did go to the doctor, um, it's basically sinuses and head cold, uh, and I also unexpectedly had to get my gallbladder out taken, gallbladder out taken, taken out not that long ago, it was been about four days now, going on five, um, I woke up with excruciating pain in my back, I was vomiting, I couldn't keep anything down, um, I got super dehydrated, my head hurt, it felt like I couldn't breathe, so, there's that. As I do this, it's, I, I know it's gonna get easier, but for right now, I gotta learn to not be so shy and open up and talk. But um, a little backstory about my girls, I would give a brief one for right now, because I will do an actual full on video on how that went. But I found out that I was pregnant May, 13th of 2020 um I was testing prior to that but all my tests were negative um and then one night I took a test and the thing did not even read it was just blank it wanted to load but it, it was blank and then the next morning I got up early and I took a test and I saw that line immediately and I was like okay um I was told that I could not have kids so finding out that I was pregnant was a really sh big shock to me. Um, my fiance was happy. He wanted one more kid, but on my June 8th scan <laughs> of 2020, we only saw baby A and then she moved the probe a little bit further down and then she said, I think I see another child. So she did a transvaginal and we saw baby B. Baby B was really low cramped in the little corner she was not laying on her side to where you could see the shape of her she was facing upwards so you can kind of see the outline of her but yeah my pregnancy was very difficult I had really bad nausea every single day it was hard for me to eat it wasn't until roughly into the middle of my second trimester where I actually was able to eat full meal full meals um all the foods that I enjoyed, could not eat them. I craved the weirdest things like Takis and Hershey syrup. Uh, I loved cereal. It's the one thing that I really, really loved. It's my favorite thing. And then I had an obsession with waffles, pizza, tacos, chicken, and stuff like that. Um, now with my 20 week scan, when I found out the gender, Shortly after that was when we noticed that baby B, her sac, didn't have enough fluid. And from there, I was sent to a specialist in Indy where he wasn't for sure if it was twin-twin transfusion syndrome, which if you don't know what that is, that's basically a disease of the placenta where nutrients isn't shared equally between babies. Baby A was the... Um, how do they put it? She was the one that was stealing from baby B. Baby B was the donor twin. 
is what they would call it. So all of her nutrients, all of her blood flow, all of her um, fluid was being deprived of her. Um, on multiple scans, you could tell that she was losing fluid a lot. Baby B was receiving too much. I don't know about baby B. There we go again. I'm rambling. Baby A was receiving too much, which led to her having heart issues. And baby B, she, <laughs> her kidneys weren't showing up in scans and it was just, but from Indy, I was sent to Cincinnati Children's where I had multiple visits, all day appointments, back to back. And then at the end, there was a conference to say whether or not I am eligible for this or that. With my first appointment, they were very concerned about me developing full-blown twin twin transfusion syndrome. Because at that point, I was showing all the signs of it. I went back a week later and they're like, well, it doesn't, you don't really meet the criteria for twin twin transfusion, transfusion syndrome. And then from that point, it was, it went downhill. I ended up having to have a fetal scopic surgery um, to potentially separate the placenta and everything that was pairing them two together. That failed. Um, I started to bleed out and then I was admitted to the hospital in Cincinnati and from that point I think it was about maybe four days after the fetoscopic surgery I baby B needed blood because she was severely anemic so they did an in utero blood transfusion for baby B there was a high possibility of her passing and there's a high possibility of baby A passing during that procedure, but luckily nothing happened. Now, I don't condone going against medical advice, but the hospital that I was staying at, I did not feel welcome. I did not feel like I was being heard. I didn't really have much of a say in my care. So I opted to go against medical advice, do the AMA, AMA form, and I was sent back home to be watched closely by the doctor in Indy up until I was able to give birth. Now, the girls stayed in for 29 weeks. We had a preterm labor scare when I was about 24 weeks. I had a disc, it's called a pessary, placed to push my cervix shut. So I wouldn't go into preterm labor at that point. But Cincinnati Children's, they were urging to deliver. Every single time that they found something wrong, their first instinct was to deliver. Now, yes, being in me hurt them, but being in me also helped them. I was told by countless doctors that they would not make it, that they would not be here. They are here. Me saying, I don't want this, led to the survival of my girls. Something told me that I, what was happening did not need to be happening. The entire journey was nothing but pain, tears, and uncertainty for them. Um, the doctor in Indy said, with each scan that I had weekly, that you know the you know the possibilities. I'm not gonna sit here and keep telling you what may or may not happen, but he had faith, and I had faith, and luckily for him, he let me basically let nature do its thing. But nature was not ready for me to lose my girls. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Um, in the next video, I will show pictures, scans, their first time out of me. Um, my emergency C-section was very traumatic, uh, which I will talk about that in another video. <clears throat> but as of right now, we're going through the motions of making sure that they get everything they need. I'm doing everything that they need. It's been a wild journey. <laughs> um, but yeah. I'm gonna have to get used to this. <laughs> because I'm sure that once I get more video ideas and learn how to properly explain things without talking to a person, I'll, pr I'll enjoy it. Like I have a journal prepared here to write down ideas, reminders, and all the stuff that I do want to talk about in 
future videos so I don't just sit here and ramble like this one. But, yeah. Um, but that will be all for today's video. Um, I probably will talk more in depth about myself. But, and you probably will be seeing my fiance on here and the girls. Uh, I'm not sure about my stepchildren though. Cause like I said, I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but all right, you guys, I hope you sub get interested to see what's coming up and subscribe. Please no hate. I'm new to this, but bye guys.